My dear friends in Christ, you will all likely agree that it is better to hear sermons that are encouraging. It is human nature to want to hear good news. We'd all much rather go away from a sermon full of happy thoughts, but every once in a while, it is a good thing for us to dwell on thoughts that are sobering. This liturgical cycle follows and mirrors the life of Christ and the mystical body. Christ's church also follows the pattern of his earthly life. This is the end of the liturgical year, and today we think of the end of mankind and the second coming of Christ and the final judgment. And this is indeed a sobering thought. Since he has come, Christ has shown us in a magnificent way his mercy. But there will be a time of strict justice when all things will be made plain. There will be no more hidden sins. Everyone will know the state of our soul. The time preceding this will be the most terrifying in the history of the world. Christ says in the Gospel for today, for there shall be then great tribulation, such as hath not been from the beginning of the world. The reign of Antichrist and every possible evil will abound. God will shorten these days for the sake of the elect. For he says, unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. This is truly terrifying. It's an interesting thing. How many times throughout history the end of the world has been predicted? There are people that seem so very certain. Within recent memory, we remember the, the Mayan calendar running out of days and these Grand predictions that 2012 will be the end of the world. Well, eight years later, we see how that went. Many, many times people have tried to predict the end times. But the simple fact is we cannot know. It will come as a flash of lightning, Christ says, like a thief in the night. And so we must be prepared. But prepared how? Most importantly, prepared spiritually. There's also an interesting tendency when we speak of the end times and the final judgment. It, it tends to be an all-engrossing sort of topic. We have this strange tendency as human beings to latch on to a morose topic and be interested by it. It's very similar when you talk about exorcisms. You talk about the devil and the priest exorcising the devil out of a person, and people are all ears and all eyes trying to soak up all the details. What an interesting topic. And it is very similar for the end times, the apocalypse, what a moving word that is, the apocalypse. But we become so fascinated by it, I think, that we tend to miss the point. Yes, we see that certain signs, the abomination of desolation, as spoken by Daniel the prophet, it is easy to understand that, yes, our altars all over the world have been desolated. The abomination of the Novus Ordo Mass, so-called, 
has replaced the true sacrifice. We see also the moral decay. Society has become so evil. Is it worse now than it was in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah? The end times feel like they must be near. But what do we do? Do we become depressed? It is frightening. Should we live in fear? Again, we might be missing the point. Christ warned us that these days would come, these things would happen, but in what time we do not know. It's as though he is telling us to stop trying. Don't try to guess. There is no point. Because the point is this. The end of the world is when we die. This is what we need to prepare for. This also might come like a flash of lightning, like a thief in the night. And this is, again, a very sobering thought. I remember being quite young and experiencing this for the first time. My oldest brother's best friend was killed in a car accident. And this sort of feeling of being punched in the stomach. You could not have expected this. A flash of lightning, a thief in the night. How sobering indeed is the thought of mortality. The end of things. But we need to consider when we think of the end, the end of what? The end of life, yes, but more specifically, perhaps more individually or subjectively, the end of a life of fun and frivolity, a life of self-indulgence, yes, it will be very sad to leave that. Or the end of a life of penance, the end of a life of patient suffering. What a wonderful thing to end. Most especially because we know the hereafter. Let us use this warning of our future judgment, of our final end, to prepare ourselves for this great day. We ought to perhaps reorganize our priorities. A little fear, my dear friends in Christ, is good for us. The scriptures say fear is the beginning of wisdom. And as we end this liturgical year, we ought to look back and examine this year. Examine our lives. Are we ready at this moment to be judged. And if not, let us go to our Blessed Mother. Let us ask her to prepare us for that final day, the day that we will meet her son as our judge. My dear friends, we want to hear from him on that day. Come, ye blessed of my Father. Enter into the joy of prepared for you from the beginning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.